Hello there, folks. It's me, RJB from RJB TV, and welcome back to RJB TV, where I, your host, RJB, will carry you and guide you along with me through this game between a player called Unhappy and Beal. Now, Unhappy is also known to many people as the player known as Mepo or San Francisco, Chicken Man, Kim Ki San. There's a lot of names, but we kind of refer to him as probably Mepo, an amazing player who has, in my opinion, been a very good player all the way back since 2019. And he's only gotten better and better and better. And in 2022 and 2023, he had his breakout season, so to speak, and he really landed himself a spot among the best players in the world. And he's right here on the orange Protoss, bottom right of the map, and his opponent is Q-R-E-R. Wait, Q R? Wow, I'm I, I'm terrible at this. Q W E R P O I S D L. One of Biel's names. This probably means something on the Korean keyboard. I'm not sure what it means exactly because I do not know what this types on the Korean keyboard. But yeah, he's a, he's on a Terran. He's on a Terran on the 12 o'clock spawn location. We have a very very good setup. I kind of am of the opinion that games where two players are right next to each other are usually the least interesting but where there's a little bit of distance not too much but just a little bit of distance between two those are the games that are most interesting because there's more surface area on the map to play on so we get more different kind of situations most of the time when they're right next to each other they just try to attack over the hill across the hill or do these very short frontal attacks so I really like this um, spawn setup that we have right now. I really am a big fan of how they spawn. We have a Nexus into double gateway coming out there from Meppo. Triple gateway. He's got something up his sleeve that I might like. Some early game aggression. Oh, usually, traditionally speaking, this triple barracks setup here from Bio is pretty strong against triple gateway. Pretty strong. But can Mapo fight his way into a good situation? That's what I want to know. Is he the kind of player who will suffer from the drawbacks of Triple Gateway against Triple Barracks opening? Well, the Nexus, of course, as well. But Nexus slows it all down even more. He's going for a Cybernetics core. He's going to use Zealots to keep the Marines away. So there's some room for Bill to be aggressive, but it's unlikely to happen. He will need stim upgrade. He's getting academy, he's getting a gas, so he's gonna go for a fast stim. He's not getting a plus two command center or a plus one command center. He's staying on one single command center, going triple barracks, getting an academy, which means he is planning on being aggressive. He's planning on being somewhat aggressive here. And the Zealots are on the way there from map one is finished up already, going across the map, going to try to walk into Biel's base and get some information to see what he's doing. Because if he can spot out and scout that Biel is going for a fast academy without a command center being added on then he can determine that he maybe has to focus more on units instead of technology um, progressing his technology he's going for dragoons after uh, four zealots he's on double gas no forge there yet actually he cancelled his singularity but he doesn't have gas for a singularity charge yet so first three dragoons then a singularity charge is he gonna get a, yeah, there's a singularity charge. He's gonna go for that. We have Stim on the way there for Biel. Biel does not yet know that the goons are on the way. He's got Marines and Medics on the way. And he's getting a command center now. So first he wanted to get a Medics and Stim for those Marines to open up the possibility of being aggressive before going for more economy. Now he's moving across the map. And here's the thing. Meppo will have another three Dragoons finish up by the time these Marines arrive, but these Marines with Stim and maybe even with Range, I mean Stim is still on the way, Range hasn't been started yet because it first has to finish Stim. Yeah, this is a pretty strong fighting force from Bill here, and more Marines will be on the way. Firebats are on the way as well, get a Forster in the back, got three more Dragoons spawning in a couple seconds, and he might be able to fight back with those three additional Dragoons. But this Marine force is capable of killing this army from Meppo. It's capable, and he's doing a really good job with the Marine Micro. The medics are keeping everything alive. Yep, this, in my opinion, is exactly why you usually should not go for 
this build order that Mapo is doing because this is gonna all come down to him being lucky he's gonna have to get lucky and if he is not lucky here oh he is a little bit lucky he is very lucky but Biol has bought himself so much time here by doing so much damage to Mepo. He's going to kill some probes now. Now the lucky part here for Mepo is that he didn't lose a lot of probes. He lost like maybe three probes in total to three fire bats. He could have lost everything if that had gone just a little bit different. But the game should have been over. This is Mepo getting a little bit lucky. He should have died. He didn't, but he should have. He should have died. Biol maybe got a little bit too over-aggressive. Biol thought, hey, wait, what's this? I can end the game. He maybe thought the game was already over. And when you think the game is already over before you've actually finished the game, you might end up making some small mistakes. And I think that Biol made some small mistakes there that ended up costing him the win right there and then. Okay, so it goes again because he still has the advantage with his marines and medics. Marines have uh, range now, so they're even stronger against the Dragoons. Mepo built a battery there in the front, but he's not really using the battery. Okay, Zealot's getting on top of the marines. He's microing backwards now. Kills the Zealots. Dragoons are buying time. This game is getting very, very close here for Mepo because Mepo does have some cannons in the back. But more marines are on the way. And there is a situation, there is a world where... Biol could have sniped down this cannon and open up this top corner for pressure or maybe taking both the nexuses. But he didn't believe that he could do it. So he's now he's, um, he waited for reinforcements, which also gave Mepo the opportunity to get his own reinforcements. The medics are running out of energy though, so the marines will now start dying because the medics are no longer healing as quickly as they should be or would want to be. Supplies are about the same. We got 41 probes against 34 SCVs. Getting a couple more gateways there on the bottom. He's got double robot there on the bottom as well, and a shuttle on the way. Mon Reaver on the way as well. Does not get shuttle speed though. So he's gonna go for slow, sh slow shuttle, double reaver. So because he now has double reaver on the way, and because he's lost his entire fighting force, Biel has to now start defending. He can no longer afford to throw units away because the reavers can end the game. Meppo was held on for long enough. Meppo was close to dying during the entire three minutes before this point in time but he held on Biol got a little bit too ambitious i would say a little bit too over eager to end the game but he has tanks behind the supply depot while the dragoons cannot get through it's all going to come down to the shuttle reaver ending the game getting some vision on the high ground with some marines there that's pretty good this actually removes this as an option for shuttles to fly over because the marines will damage the shuttle which then allows marines inside the base to kill and finish the shuttle this is something i haven't really seen done before like usually the marines get put onto the high ground like spaced out to get vision but he's actually maybe going to use he's going to do exactly that he's going to do exactly that put them on the high ground for vision it splits them up like this has vision on the high ground, very cheap way of getting vision. You don't have to build engineering base, you use some marines with a dropship. And he picked up two tanks that he had at the front to go for tank craft almost pros. But look at this, got one, two, three, four, five cannons on this side. We've got three cannons on the top side. The top side is actually the weakest point. Actually the weakest point at the moment. So you're gonna fly right through that. He flies right through it. Not sure if he saw it because he's busy here on the top side of the map. He lost the shuttle to two raids. Biel is on top of everything. And as we are looking at the Reavers, the drop comes in on the bottom. Has to start unloading those tanks. The tanks do a load. The probes are running the safety. One tank goes down. Tank number two just down as well. No tank shots fired on the probes. Keeps everything alive. That's that's a, that's great play from my map over there. Great awareness. He removed right on time. Biel really needed the tank drop because he's behind on workers. This army is not really that big, but he does have five barracks. Got engineering bay that can level uh, one attack is finished up, getting level one armor. He's getting triple armory there, four armories in fact, all at the same time. Triple command center there, double, uh, triple gas. Everything is going on to the minerals, getting turrets are on the sides. Division on the high ground is doing a great job there. He did kill some dragoons here on the high ground. 
excuse me, kill some Marines here on the high ground to take away that vision. So he will need engineering bays here to fly on the high ground or maybe float those barracks onto the high ground later on in the game. Got a triple shuttle drop there from Meppo going over the left side of the map. He has a double four robos there on the bottom. It's getting Templar Storm right now, so we will soon see Templar Storms as well. Still only on eight gateways, but eight gateways is enough at the moment. Triple Stargate there to prepare himself for shuttle carrier. But first, it's going to be Corsair Carrier to help get those shuttles into the enemy base. Arrives on the scene as a Lala Zealous. Is there a high Templar in that? Is a Reaver in there? Reaver shoots. It's low, but does explode on the Marines, but the SV stay alive as they run away to the south. So Bill keeps his workers alive. Turrets on the side will go down there though. So he opens up this uh, left side for future shuttle drops. But Bill immediately starts building new turrets. But this drop, I do not think that drop will arrive before the turrets are ready. Yeah, the turrets will be ready before the, sh uh, the drop arrives. He's gonna need some Corsairs to help keep those shuttles alive against those turrets. Couple tanks on the high ground there to push the Dragoons away, take away that vision, and open up the sides to having floating structures hanging here for extended vision. Scans coming down on the entire map there from Biol. Sees the front, sees the sides. He scanned these two to look for a shuttle drop. But the drop is right there on top of his base in the top left corner. Marines are loading, Marines. Oh, Templars are loading, Templars storming. And the Marines will go down, but the race is coming in to clean up. And a couple of units that were there. SV is all still alive. Bill is defending like a madman. Honestly, Bill is one of the best Terrans in the world with his defense usually being airtight. Like the thing with Bill is that he doesn't play particularly high APM, like 220 to 30, it's not super high. But playing at a lower APM than your maximum opens up some of that brain power to focus on other things, allows you to focus on exact timings, allows you to focus on the minimap a little bit more because you're less occupied with being fast. What's most important is doing the things you have to do. Playing speed is not that important. And even though I'm saying that, he is playing very fast. He's progressing rapidly. Goes in with the drop there. Shulls forced on low. Shulls do. Gets the Templar on the scene. Storms the SCVs. Goes from 79 down to 58. Gets 21 kills. That is what Mepo needed. But is it too late? I mean, I'm going to have to add that it's never too late to start hitting those storm drops. And Biel does not have a big bank. So yeah, that drop was right on time. Perhaps if he had missed that drop, the next drop after that could have been too late to really be a deciding factor in this game. But that drop was right on time, right on the edge of Buell having a strong big economy and being able to add more factories to his base. At the moment, still only on five factories. Triple Stargate, a starport, comes with a drop over the bottom side, flies in all the way, unloading a high temple. Now they get sniped. Is there one more high templar in there? Nope. All the high templars have died. There was a target fire on the high templar. But another drop comes in over the top right. It's a double drop extravaganza. Starts all loading. High Templar on the scene. The Templar storms all the Marines. Only one High Templar on load. So we have another drop there already. We know it's Corsair's pushing structures away. Now could there still be something in there? Nope, that one is empty. So I think the raids have largely died to Corsair's earlier that were here in the base. So he's now making new raids. That's why the past couple of drops made the way all the way in because he no longer had the rates to snipe the shuttles. Of course, we return back home after taking down some structures, forced that one to land. He's got the cannons on the sides now. Like, notice how the cannons are a little bit further away than usual because the tanks on the high ground are pushing the distance away. So they have to build them all the way over there instead of all the way over here. So there is some extended vision for Bill at the moment. He has more reaction time, except here on the right side where he's got no vision on the high ground or behind the high ground. Drop over the bottom left, goes in all the way. Bill doesn't seem to respond on time. He's not responding. He's distracted, runs away with the SCVs, but loses a bunch of them. Loses 12. Does he have one more storm somewhere in there? Yes, he has one more storm. Lands another one, gets another 25 kills. So, oh, all the way down to 26. Oh my God, 24. He went down from like 78 or 70 down to 23. So we have at least 50 kills on the board there. 
at a really bad timing in the game because as you can see Bill's economy is very very bad his money is very very low at this point I would say pull all these SCPs on the gas towards the minerals and recover your economy faster than before faster than last time got five command centers keep them all running non-stop then you get like 14 excuse me you get one SCV every 14 seconds so times four per minute you get about 20 SCVs per minute so he needs like two to three minutes to recover his entire economy and during those minutes wait yeah two three minutes two three minutes during those two to three minutes Meppo is going to try to kill as many units as he can do as much damage as he can maybe land another drop his goal is to make sure that Buell cannot recover peacefully to force him to spend money while trying to rebuild his economy is slowly recovering on 40 SCVs his mineral is still below a thousand Meppo is over 5,000 Meppo is Meppo has everything in place to switch to carriers, but he's focusing on gateways at the moment. He's got... That's 11... 14... 18... He's got 24 gateways. So yeah, his Zealots, Dragoon, Templar production is exactly in the right spot. He can produce and produce and max out rapidly. I'm not a drop on the top right. If this one hits, it might just be over for Bill. Bill will have to keep his works alive at all costs. Starts a loading barrier. Yeah, he's got the High Templar storming. As if he's run to safety, that's four High Templars. Kills a lot of Marines. Does not kill a single SCV there though, but he forced him to pull all of his workers to safety and they do return to the minerals safely. They stay alive, but he lost a lot of Marines, losing turrets on the sides. He's now switching over into Goliaths as his anti-air. Those Goliaths are pretty damn strong. Pretty damn strong and effective. Do more damage than Marines. About the same damage as Raids, but they can also shoot on the ground, so they're versatile. And they do not die to Corsairs, which is also quite amazing. Raids die to Corsairs really, really quickly. He's getting so he's gonna build a proxy drop base here. He's gonna maybe build some robos there so they can build Templar Zealots from this and send in shuttles under the protection of carriers which are on the way. Eight of them at the same time. Just target number nine, so we can build nine carriers at the same time. I would say get one more right there and one more right here for a total of 11 stargates for 11 carriers every single production cycle drop comes in at the same time. Stars to storm. Dodges the no, does not dodge the storm. Oh, amazing. Four storm action. Down to 28. Down to 28. 120 supply. Great storms there from Meppo. The Goliaths are on the wrong side of the base. Goliath, he put them in the line right there. So if anything that flies over this section gets taken down by the Goliaths pretty much immediately. But I do not think that was the right choice. You want those Goliaths closer to the command center so you can snipe drops trying to fly into your base to kill your workers, because the workforce is, of course, one thing that matters the most. So Meppo is rapidly at lightning speed, building all over the place, getting cannons to buy himself time to lock Bill into his base, but also to slow down a potential push like this. Zealots are running in to kill some tanks. So he doesn't lose a single tank. He tried, but didn't kill a single one. Perhaps just to open up supply space. So Bill, 43 SCVs, he's putting most of them to work right now, he's still mining gas. Once again, I'd say remove them from the gas. Tanks moving to the side to kill these cannons to take away that control over the map that Beppo has at the moment. Another frontal attack, this time around he does kill the tanks. Raids are on the hunt for the carriers in the course, but look at this, 9 carriers, 8 carriers, we still have... Actually, only eight carriers are going to be on the map. The Corsairs are going to be there to kill the race. Trying to snipe the observers. Gets every single observer. So now the carriers have to make their retreat. But he, wait, he still had one more observer in the mix. Right there. One observer survived. The rates are gone. Rates are gone. So now his... One of the main fighting forces against carriers. The rates are dead and gone. He had to try to snipe the observers during transport so that he could hunt down the carries it was a worthy shot he had to try when you're behind with your economy sometimes you have to take big risks to buy yourself time if he was able to snipe all the observers and then kill the carriers he would have bought himself 
two to three minutes of free rebuilding time. Also, Mepo stormed his own workers there to open up supply space, because when you have carriers, you do not need a lot of probes. But he might have killed too many of them, so he's going to have to pull some of the probes on the gas towards the minerals at some point. Because he really killed a lot of his probes. He had 89, he killed 42 probes. That's a lot of income suddenly removed from the face of the planet. Great Disrupt Raptor on the front, pushing forward. I think Bjol might just be dying here. Trying to snipe a carrier. Snipes a... Does he snipe a carrier? Kills a carrier, but loses the rates in the process. Zelda's on the ground. Temples on the ground. Coming through. It's just Tempars, really. They're not even storming. They're just walking in there for fun. It's a party time. Storms his own high Tempars, because why not? Gets one storm there on the tanks. Tanks are being hunted down. There's nothing they can shoot into the sky. He's got ghosts in the back, waiting for lockdown energy. But you know what? Disruption web's happening. Tank cannot shoot. This is just Meppo running away with a home run, scoring a touchdown, and winning the game. Bio played well, but Meppo played better. Meppo played a really strong and solid Protoss here. He absolutely dominated. He started off with a very difficult and rough early game because, as I said before, next into Triple Gateway is just weak. Against a Terran, Nexus into Triple Gateway is just weak. Specifically when the Terran goes for Triple Barracks, into Gas and Academy, Fast Stim, 3 Medics, it's just very weak to go for Triple Gateway. Because Stim Marines and Medics are super strong. And you need Cannons or Dragoons to fight back against that specifically. That's why most Protoss players go for a Choke opening on a corner spawn. They go Nexus, Forge, Pile in the front, gateway, two or three cannons in the front. Because cannons destroy marines, but marines destroy zealots. So you cannot go for the zealots if there is them. But this game, Meppo managed to survive. Had a little bit of luck there with his firebats at the start. Let me just rewind and find the firebats jumping on the probes. Because that could have won the game for Bill very early. You could see that Bill was trying to end the game as fast as possible. It runs all the way in. I'm going to slow down a little bit and look right here. This is where he made the mistake. One dies. Well, I wouldn't. Maybe it wasn't a mistake. But you could argue that it would have been better for Buell to walk over the bottom side and then enter from this section. So walk, walk down, then walk to the right and enter this economy section where the probes are from the bottom and it bolts out at the same time. He went in through the front, which means Mappo had time to respond. He saw the fire bats, he had dragoons, he could move his probes off of the minerals, have them unstack, and do some damage against the fire bats. All in all, this was very impatiently played by Bill, this early game section. Very impatiently played, because I think he assumed he had already won the game after he saw the triple gateway while he opened up with a triple barracks, did a fast gas, fast academy, fast stim, he must have assumed, I can end the game right here. And you know what? He wasn't wrong. He could end the game. He just got impatient. He got impatient, not once, but twice, a little later as well. So here we have that little fight happening, and I'm going to just use this as a screenshot for the video. I hope you enjoyed this. RGB from RGB TV here, signing out. See you next time. Meppo against Biol. Great game.